Hi, and welcome to section Implementing Neural Networks. In the last section, we learned about the most fundamental concepts about neural networks. In this section, since you already know the basics by now, we are going to talk about neural networks in detail. By the end of this section, you are going to know what they are, how they work, and how we can implement them in Java which dominates the industry as number one software development language. We are going to start with gradient descent, and once we know what it is, we are going to start talking about well-known neural network implementations, such as feed-forward neural nets, multi-layer perceptron, and recurrent neural networks. Now, we move on to the first video of this section, that deals with explaining the gradient descent. Gradient descent is one of the most important building block of neural networks. Before using neural networks in your applications, first you should watch and learn this topic and get better insights about how neural networks work. In this video, we are going to take a look at gradient descent as a cost minimizer function. After that, we'll talk about stochastic gradient descent which is a just a stochastic approximation of actual gradient descent, and will explain why we use them. Finally, we are going to show you the usage of stochastic gradient descent in Deep Learning 4G library. Gradient descent is a well-known optimization algorithm for minimizing functions. In this case, we'll use it for minimizing the cost function. However, it's a general algorithm and it's used for a linear regression or other machine learning algorithms as well. Imagine you have a function j with independent variables like theta0 and theta1. Our goal is to minimize this function. So first thing we can do is to start from some random initial point on the surface, which corresponds to pair of some theta0 and theta1. You can think of this point like it's yourself, and you want to go down the hill as quick as possible, using a proper path. So, what would you do is to spin around yourself and decide your next little step that leads you down the hill and it keeps going and going until your step doesn't take you down for some time. As you can imagine, if you were a giant, your steps would be big and sometimes you would overshoot your target. Or if you take so little steps, local minima may capture you and you may miss the global minimum in exchange for suboptimal minimum. So this is the idea behind the gradient descent. If we took, take a look at its math, this is the picture corresponds to this formula that you can see right here. As you can see, it's not that hard. However, this approach doesn't work well on big data sets because of its computational complexity. Therefore, Instead of doing this, we need to use the modification of the gradient descent algorithm, which is called stochastic gradient descent. Since the cost function that we want to minimize is sum of squared errors, every time we repeat the process of updating our position, we need to recalculate errors using all the data we have. What we do with stochastic gradient descent is randomly subsampling the data, then calculate the error and hope to find out the local minima with less computation. So this is the idea, and people have developed modifications of this simple idea, which are called Momentum, Averaging, Adegrad, RMS Probe, Atom, etc. You can try each one of them depending on your problem set. You may already notice neural networks have hyperparameter space which makes them computationally expensive to build. That's why we use GPUs for training them. In Deep Learning 4G, there are a bunch of optimization algorithms. They all converge at different rate. The way we set neural networks optimizers is using one of its builder functions. In this video, we talked about very important topic gradient descent. Without knowing this, it's impossible to understand how neural networks work. As you can see, it's very simple and smart approach. Hope you like the way it is.